subscribe, like, comment, share. What are the best life hacks for poor people? Okay, I've got this. I've been really really super poor. I'm upper middle class now through busting my ass, but I still live, as if I'm poor. One first of all, food is expensive. You do not have to eat that much. Really you don't. Mentally, being hungry as a teen screwed me up a bit. I learned that an empty stomach was normal, or even an accomplishment, if I only had a couple of bucks, and had to make them last to learn to cook dried beans. Pat boil them first. Then rinse and cook until done. Google it if you need to. Super cheap and nutritious meal. Bonus points for cooking them in a crock pot in a small room. It will help eat your room while they cook. Three cheap hot dog buns are a cheaper alternative to loaves of sliced bread, if you are on your own. A whole loaf of bread can often go stale, before you eat it. A pack of eight hot dog buns is usually one dollar. So that's a week's worth of bread for one dollar for wear and it hat and scarf in the house. It makes a huge difference. Keep that thermostat on 60 degrees. You will make it. Also, if you are a single person spend time at the library or other public space. Free heat and often free entertainment 5, if you can afford it, buy an electric blanket. 6 if you can't afford it, get one of those plush acrylic throws. Use it as the first layer of bed covering. Top it with some type of heavier cotton quilt. If you don't have a quilt, top it with a sheet, and then some other type of blanket. You will stay warm. It's amazing 7 do not buy bar soap. Buy body wash, and use one of those mesh loofers. You will use much less product 8, if your house and windows are old, cover them with anything you can find. Sheet plastic or bubble wrap are ideal, but are also expensive. Use trash bags, cardboard, anything you can come up with. Tape around door ledges with duct tape. It works. 9 don't eat space you don't need. It was not unusual for us to stay mostly in one room during the really cold parts of winter. Just heat that room. If there are no doors, tack up blankets in the doorways to stop the airflow 10 cram anything you can under doors to stop. Drafts 11 take care of your possessions. No matter what it is, it's all you have. Make the most of it. Don't toss your things about or leave your clothes on the floor. 12 if doing laundry is an issue. Have some clothes set aside as strictly public clothes. Pull them off as soon as possible, and put on your house clothes. At least you can look presentable longer between washes 13 learn all you can about everything possible. It is so good for your mind, and can help stave off depression 14 join a church, unless you find it offensive. Many churches provide weekly meals. Go eat, enjoy the climate controlled environment, and maybe even enjoy the fellowship 15 know your true worth is not related to money, there are so many other things. I need time to think. Edited, thank you so much for the kind words, silver, and gold. I'm female. Some people asked how I made it out. I won't give my life story, but will keep it short and simple. I worked. I worked my ass off for survival and an education. There was so much about my young life that I could share but this isn't the place for pity or such. There was abuse, parental drug addiction, father committed suicide, and I became intensely focused on building my life. I wanted a home and to feel secure. I hope my comment helped somebody as much as all the replies have helped me. Every time someone commented that this guy gets it, or similar I started to remember that I do get it. I was reminded of the determination I showed and everything I overcame. This is important and valuable to me right now. Life is messy, and I'm facing some difficult life choices. I have been haunted by fear surrounding these choices, because it will jeopardize my financial stability. But reading through this comment thread has helped me remember what I've already faced and overcome. I feel so much stronger. So where am I today? I spent my morning watching my youngest child play basketball. I drove there in my car that is warm and dependable. Then I went to the grocery store. I treated myself to my favorite cheese. I bought my kids three big boxes of Lucky Charms. They were on sale 
3 slash dollar sign 10 exclamation point. And I came home to a warm house with a working washer and dryer. I put my food in a working refrigerator. I truly know I'm blessed. I just want to add that being poor is exhausting. And scary. It's so hard. But happiness is very very possible, no matter your income level. Money will make some parts of life easier but not all. To all my fellow college kids who use Chegg as a lifeline, but can't afford it. Use textcheat.com, copy the URL of the blocked Chegg page and paste, answer that you're under 13 on the survey, so they can't ask you anything else, and bam. An unlocked text of the problem solution. Another tip for college students, international editions of textbooks aren't exactly illegal, but getting a book in black and white is worth it to pay one-sixth the cost. Eliminate food waste. Things you'd normally throw away like vegetable peelings and bones can be turned into flavorful stock for future meals. Something I do is save bread ends and or pieces of bread that got squished, stale, or whatever, in a bag in the freezer. Once I collect a decent amount, I thaw them out and make some homemade stuffing. It's super tasty and feels fancy for just being bread, veggies, sage, and stock. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's still plenty of meat on that bone. Now you take this home, throw it in a pot, add some broth, a potato. Baby, you've got a stew going. Edit, bless you people. First Reddit gold. Go to the library. Not only are there books there, but also you can check out video games, sewing machines, movies, museum passes, so much more. Not to mention the software, education, and events that can help you get a raise, promotion, or better job. Libraries rule. I'm pretty comfortable financially, but still use the library all the damn time. Mine even checks out wall art. Library card plus apps like Hoopla or Lobby. You get access to your entire library on your phone slash tablet. You can download thousands of ebooks, audiobooks, TV shows, movies, comics, graphic novels, music for free, just signing up with your library card. Reddit was where I first heard about this. Other things available at some libraries that I didn't mention, board game rental, test prep courses, wifi hotspots, water park passes, GoPro rental, music streaming, the list goes on. Also, if you're lucky, at least one nearby library might have a 3D printer. Rich people throw out amazing stuff. If you know someone with a truck, you can go around the wealthy areas on garbage day and get all sorts of furniture, appliances, and clothing. A little cleaning, and maybe a few minor repairs and you have lots of stuff to use or sell. Before I moved out the poor zone, I had 10 old computers I'd picked up off the roadside. Cobbling parts from one to another, I got four of them up and running. Sold one to a co-worker for $90. Cost to self, $0. Edit, I didn't have a car at the time. I walked slash biked everywhere. Other edit, it wasn't a time consuming effort on the one I sold two parts swapped, some dirt slash dust removal, and probably the most time spent cleaning out the previous user's stuff. Maybe 40 to 50 minutes $90 for less than an hour's effort? Okie doke. It still amazes me how quickly people toss out barely broken computers. A few years ago my brother was telling me about how his neighbors were throwing out their laptop because it made a strange noise and Windows wouldn't boot. After a bit of back and forth of me asking questions about the laptop, I explained my theory and how it just needs a new hard drive. At that point my brother points to a laptop on the coffee table and says thought you'd say something like that. If you can fix it, you can have it. Woo. Free laptop. All it took was 10 minutes replacing the hard drive with a spare I had and a fresh Windows install. If you wind up homeless, get a Planet Fitness Gym membership, $10 a month, so you can shower every day. The one near my work also has free Wi-Fi, $10 a month free showers, free locked storage locations in practically every city in the US can shower, shit, shave, wash even occasionally get free pizza added benefit of getting to work out. You could live in a car and spend $10 a month and slap together a semi-functioning form of homelessness. 
No judgment pretty great bonus, if you're literally living there. I've been homeless often. I used to just walk into the YMCA and shower every day. Also, libraries. OMG, libraries kept my sanity while being repeatedly homeless due to mental illness. The entertainment value, the ability to get several jobs, that got me unhomeless, the hand sanitizer. It's actually in my advanced directive that my funeral is to be held at my public library's auditorium. If you have access, ethnic grocery stores usually have cheaper produce, can confirm. Local ethnic neighborhood grocery stores have prices much lower than the bigger supermarkets. I more or less only shop local anymore, adding all the onto this, because I cut my grocery bill when shopping with them. They have some great special buys each week and an amazing return policy, not only will they replace the item, they'll refund the cost too, yep. Our average monthly cost for groceries was around $300 for two adults and a small child shopping at Publix. And all the opened here and monthly grocery cost went down to around $80 to $100. There are some things we still buy at other grocery stores, but replacing 70% of it with stuff from all the drastically reduced the cost of groceries. Hot sauce is a simple investment to turn sad, bland food into sad, slightly less bland food. Doctor, if your medications are too expensive. My parents worked themselves to the bone and we ate like shit. To help pay for medicine for me and my sister, hemophilia, we needed medicine to help clot during our periods, they never complained and just worked, my mom didn't want anyone to know we were poor. There were cheaper alternatives. They could have saved thousands of dollars. I'm a family doctor now, and I make it a point to talk about medication costs and ask at all of my follow-ups if things are affordable. We don't know what your co is, and it's not always easy to tell what will be covered on your plan. Please let us know if something is too much, this is what we are here for. Edited to add hey thanks stranger for the gold and silver. That's a first for me. To answer some recurring questions, I have hemophilia C, which I like to call the off-brand hemophilia because it's quite different than the more common ones. It's autosomal recessive, both of my parents are carriers. My two boys are carriers and one is symptomatic. The medication was Amica oral solution, and as someone more eloquently describes in the comments below, prescribing the cheap medicine isn't always that simple. It depends on your insurance company, your deductible, which pharmacy you use, yes that matters. Especially for psych meds, and if Jupiter is in line with Venus and the pharmacy god smiled down on us. For some people $50 a month is reasonable, and they would rather pay more for a long acting, and other people can only afford $5 a month, and are reusing supplies like lancets and catheters. I work in the US. If your medication is too expensive, and you have something other than Medicare or Medicaid try looking for manufacturer's coupons. Simpacort has a great one for one year no copays right now, and some of the newer long-acting stimulants do too. Ask about local compounding pharmacies, mail order, three-month supplier or off-label dosing. Pharmacists look away, like you can use eye drops in your ears for an acute bacterial infections and sometimes they are significantly cheaper. I've done that once or twice when patients just didn't have the extra cash to get the one designated for your ears. If you need a procedure done and have a residency program or medical school local to you, see if they need any volunteers for didactics or demonstrations. We've done ingrown toenails, warts, skin lumps and bumps for free during lectures to teach the other residents how to do them. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more daily uploads.